Welcome. Reading good night stories with Ford Grandma. Hello, grandchildren. Grandma here. Are you ready for bed? Do you have your teeth brushed? If so, then here we go. Tonight, I'm going to read to you fairy tales and fables. The Country Mouse and the City Mouse Once there was a little country mouse who lived in the corner of a farmer's field. He was a very happy mouse. He always had enough to eat, and although it was simple fare, bits of grain and nuts and dried peas from the fields and crumbs from the farmer's table, it suited him perfectly and he wanted nothing more. One day, the little country mouse invited a city mouse to come and spend a few days with him. The country air and the peace and quiet will do you a world of good, cousin, he said. So, in due time, the city mouse arrived. The country mouse welcomed his friend with open arms, and he brought out all the good things he had stored away to please his city-bred guest. But the city mouse turned up his nose in scorn at such simple food. My poor cousin, he cried, is this all you have to eat? You really must come home with me and see how I live. Believe me, Country life cannot compare with life in the city. So the little country mouse finally agreed to go home with the city mouse to see for himself how his cousin lived. He found that all he had said was true. His cousin lived in a fine house and had the best of everything. Indeed, the country mouse could scarcely believe his eyes as he watched with his cousin a safe hiding place behind the cupboard while the rich people and their guests ate dinner in the grand dining room. When the people had finished eating and departed, the city mouse whispered, Now is our chance. Come on! And he led the way from the floor to a chair, and from there to the table. Now it was the city mouse's turn to play host. He ran to and fro, to and fro, taking care of his guests once. He pressed dish after dish upon him as if he were waiting on a king. The country mouse was very impressed and thanked his cousin for everything. But just as they were about to nibble the cake, the door flew open and a large house cat burst it into the room. The two friends just managed to jump from the table and run for their lives into a hole in the wall. At last, when all was still again, the city mouse ventured back into the room. The danger is past, he said. We can go back to our feast. The country mouse shook his head. No, thank you, he said. I'm going back to my home in the country as fast as I can. This city life may be fine for you, but I'd rather eat my crust of bread in peace and quiet than live like a king in the midst of such awful dangers. The Gnat and the Bull Once there was a silly gnat who kept buzzing about the head of a bull. Finally, he settled down on one of the bull's horns. Pardon me, Mr. Bull, he said. 
If I am disturbing you, if you find my weight a burden to you, just say so. I will be off in a moment. Do not give it another thought, replied the bull. It is all the same to me whether you go or stay. To tell you the truth, I did not even know you were there. As the gnat, his feelings hurt, flew away. The bull shook his head. It takes a small mind, he said, to be so conceited. The Golden Eggs One day, a farmer went to the nest of his goose to see if she had laid an egg. To his surprise, he found, instead of an ordinary goose egg, an egg of solid gold. What a fine goose, he cried. I can sell this egg for a great deal of money. Every morning after that, the farmer found another golden egg in the nest. Every day, he sold the golden egg. He was slowly growing rich. But as the farmer grew rich, he grew greedy. One day he said to himself, My goose lays just one egg each day. No doubt there are many more inside her. And he had no rest until he had killed the goose. Oh me, oh my, said the farmer. Why was I so greedy? Now I shall be poor again. I have killed the goose that laid the golden eggs. Please like and subscribe. E and now off to dreamland you go.